Golden Globe nominees just announced and still nothing for NBA best flop. Unacceptable. Run it back starts now. Run it up, the run it back. Yeah. Run it up, the run it back. Run it up, run it back. Run it up. Welcome to the soon to be probably back. nominated yeah. for many award show Run It Back. My name is Michelle Beal, joined <laughs> as always by Stadium Insider Sham Sharani, a Chandler P in the house, and of course Eddie with just always a new beanie or took or what do you call them? What do you call them? Beanie? I think I I think I hear they're called scullies, but uh, scullies? I go with beanie. Yeah, beanie. <laughs> scullies. Took, took, took is the Canadian. Yeah, that's it. Uh, guys, we have a lot to talk about. Obviously, a big weekend in a few days last week that we didn't get to. And the Pelicans played the Suns 29 times over the weekend. So let's just jump right into that right here. And now this was a fun, fun, fun series. Zion with 35 on Friday, by the way, had a moment. This is yesterday when they beat him in overtime. But Zion in his last five games, over 30 points a game, nine rebounds, almost five assists. Chandler. Is he reaching another level? Uh, he sure is. I mean, 38, 5, 8, or 14 of 21 shooting. This dude is so efficient. And let's not let all this drama between this new rivalry take away from what he's doing. He is fully in the MVP uh, talks. He's the best player on the best team in the West without Brandon Ingram pretty much most of the year. So, to me, yeah, and the most impressive thing to me about Zion is he doesn't force bad shots. He, he doesn't take step back threes. I've never seen him really take a bad shot. So he's so efficient. He gets to his spot. He takes open threes and teams defense are tailored to let this man shoot and not get to his left hand. And he still somehow does it. He's insanely efficient. Uh, I mean, he's he's averaging 25 on 15 and a half shots per game. I think the only only other person to ever do that is Amari and Charles Barkley. Like he's putting up crazy numbers and he's leading his team to the best team in the West. So you got to put him in the MVP talks and uh, you know, everything he's been through, I, he's, he's really, really taken his game to another level. MVP talks. I like it going bold. This start to Monday <laughs> Zion, Zion looks, Zion looks amazing. He looks like the player we were hoping he would be. I was talking with people over the weekend. It's like, Yo, I get stuck between I'd love to see him lean out and just be even more athletic than he is. And this is the perfect thing for him. He's the most powerful player in the league. This is exactly what he needs to be. He's like young Shaq who jumps even higher. It's pretty astounding watching him play. He was 14 to 21 uh, against the Suns. He even made two threes. He's 25 points a game. And he's barely scratching the surface of like his skill level. He's just like just trying to get as close as he can to the basket and just jump really high and throw it in there. Um, I, I think you know, Willie Green has done a great job putting him in actions that make sense for him, getting him running downhill, whether it's off uh, a screen or kind of around the elbow area, they call it blade or just dribble handoff, getting him running downhill. He's a terrifying player to defend. Nobody's quick enough if they're big enough and nobody's uh, strong enough if they're quick enough. So it's, it's, he's an absolute nightmare. I can't wait to see him in the playoff setting and what he gives us there. Yeah, I think he's just picking up right where he left off a couple of years ago when you saw how dominant he was, but he wasn't as refined as he is now. And I know in talking to people around the Pelicans, they feel like he's just going to get better as the year goes on. You can already see it. He looks a lot better physically, but also the way he's playing, he just looks a lot sharper. And he dealt with some injury issues. Even this year, he had a foot contusion, just minor things that, you know, the Pelicans are going to be careful about him with. Um, and so I think he does have a chip on his shoulder. This entire team has a chip on his shoulder. And when you saw him the other night, he had that crazy dunk. And then he speaks about how he saw his team losing the playoffs uh, and what that made him feel like. You know, his dad went on local radio and talked about how Zion Williamson could have been playing last year in the playoffs. He wanted to play, but you saw the organization protect him. And now he's back and he really looks like he's, he's himself. And he's picking up right where he left off before the injuries. I'm sure they, you know, the, the coulda, woulda, shouldas, but I'm glad they were safe with him because now we're getting the version of Zion that we all waited for. And if you didn't see the dunk that Shams just alluded to, here it is. It's uh, game's over, okay? So just just know that. But it's a beautiful, glorious cool. moment. And he did. He said after the game, so it was amazing. for his teammates who got <laughs> basically thrown away last <laughs> season by that Suns team. It does, uh, here, he, here he is after the game because he does address it. And I want everyone to hear his actual words. Yeah, get away, Chris Paul. <laughs> yeah campaign you're not gonna do anything about it okay we're not playing this down i was totally kidding um 
Oh, we are going to play the sound. Check one, check two. But you got to understand. I mean, you can understand it or not. They sent my teammates home last year. I missed all last year. I got I got carried away a little bit. I admit that. But, you know, I was in that locker room. My brothers were down because, you know, the son sent us home last year. That, that's a tough moment to be a part of. So in that moment, I got carried away. I admit that. Oh, yeah. carried away. No, he doesn't need to apologize, Chandler, does he? I mean, listen, what an answer, though. That That's like an unwritten rule. You don't do that. You don't do the game's over. You have class. You dribbled out. You see that all the way from high school basketball to the NBA. Wait, 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 wait. But can we just be honest here? The word class being used in a game in which Chris Paul was attending. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that that's fair. I totally that get it. That dunk is nasty, though. Yeah. <laughs> Lighting in air. Listen, as a player, I hate it. And now as a fan and media, I love it. This kid has been, <laughs> you know, weight shamed the last couple of years. He's been injured. This team put his team out. He basically on live TV showed the world, I'm healthy, I'm that dude, and I'm going to give you a little taste of what I can do. And like I said, as a as a fan, you love it. You love this rivalry. You love, the, you know, the, these teams going at it. But as a player, you, it is something that you definitely aren't supposed to do or just kind of dribble the ball out. But um, crazy dunk. Like, let's get him in the dunk contest. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah, no, <laughs> I don't out, want to hurt. Shout out the Suns, the only people alive who – are upset that Zion dunk like get, get over yourself <laughs> they did this Michael Bridges did this in the playoffs and it was a whole thing so it's like yo this is the get back I I need these two teams to play in the playoffs oh, yes. give me seven games of this I don't care how we get there what round or whatever but like I get it unspoken rules but it's 2022 now we we, we flip bats we don't throw it guys <laughs> after that like you know it, it's fine let Zion dunk. Don't ever get in the way of Zion dunking. We, we need that. The, the game is better ever. when he's doing that. Hey, here's the thing what's funny, too, about Zion. Like, he, he can honestly do no wrong right now. This thing, we can admit, it's, <laughs> it's a little tasteless, right? And we're still protecting him just the way he handled himself in the media and his answer. And it, it, he just has this charisma about him that's very likable, that even when he does something that he really shouldn't do at the end of the game, I find myself, like, protecting him in this weird way. I, I don't I, – I love him. I love everything about him. He's so likable. By the way, if we don't get this in the, because you've got the Chris Paul um, officially unofficial favorite player, Jose Alvarado, that rivalry for me is, it started last year when Chris Paul refused to say his name correctly. Now Alvarado won't even say his name uh, in interviews, just that player. I, if we don't get more of this, and I think they play again, God, I think they play again soon, <laughs> which is insane to me, but this is the, this is the, I don't know, Western Conference Finals that we want, right? I feel safe in saying that. Please, Lord, no doubt. Jesus. Okay, good. I want to make sure all that's it. But Chandler, I, the unwritten rules thing, I've always had a problem with that as just a fan and media person, especially in baseball. I think, isn't it just silly? I mean, everyone's a highly paid professional. It just seems silly. Look, yeah, and here's and, speaking and, of. And, there you also, go. Also, <laughs> I hate that one. That one. I hate that one. <laughs> also, if you're gonna if you're gonna break those unwritten rules, you better do a banger like Zion did. And not, <laughs> yeah, and what not is this? This, this is a weak uh, laugh. Yeah. Wait, y'all don't y'all don't like the uh, well, Eddie, I'm sure hands. loves the Rudy Gobert this layup. Man, this man's eight <laughs> feet tall and did a little layup like that. He better hang on the rim and get a T and actually mean it if he's gonna do that at the end of the game. That's the most Rudy Gobert thing of all time. That was absurd. I hope the the French national team, the soccer team, is just embarrassed right now. Wow, <laughs> you're going, you're crossing over to soccer for this one because they're just doing too great. You gotta dunk that with, with two hands and slap the, the backboard. By the way, yeah, like, hang on the rim or something, bro. Like, what are we? Hey, this is my point, though, but it's really the same thing, right? But we're going at Gobert and we're protecting Zion. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Don't it's you, crazy. Don't you dare put them in the same sentence together. <laughs> right. Like, how dare you? <laughs> I actually think what Rudy Gobert does is way more insulting. Am I wrong? At least the other one was a show. Everybody won. But this one is just like, and then to get in Beasley's face as if, A, you're going to do anything. But B, like, what What are you back in? Shams, that's that's weak. That one is weak. And it's weird that we got both of them <laughs> in the same weekend. <laughs> Listen, I know if Chandler was in that position, he would have dunked it with two hands and slapped right. it backwards. So that's what I'm <laughs> expecting out of you in that situation. No, no. situation like that. Like Zion Thank Williamson's you. dunk was nasty. You know what's crazy is 
Last year, he wasn't even ready to play. He was throwing down like this, you know, between the legs, windmill dunk. And it's like, he's such a freak athlete. It's crazy. I just want to take like a second and just admire that. I yeah, think we should. indented the floor when he did that dunk. <laughs> that was one of the most wild videos I ever seen. The floor yeah. like <sighs> dipped three inches. It was weird. If you're gonna do it, you gotta do it. You're at home. Get the people. Like, give the people a show. They yeah. paid for it. It's almost like Rudy's was just like he wanted two more points. Like you know, it was. It's a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> Stat padding. That's what Rudy's yeah. was. <laughs> Brutal. Oh, well, I love it. Uh, this was the, was the gifts that kept on giving. We do have another fun story in the league. Um, it's a little bittersweet, of course, with with the passing of Paul Silas. Uh, his coach, his son did not coach yesterday, but the Rockets beat the Bucks. P.S. That is their fourth straight home win. Uh, the league mourning the death of Paul Silas today. And if you listen to everyone, when somebody passes like this, that's such a large legend. There's not a bad word to be said. You can tell how much he was respected and loved. But on the Rocket side of things, Chandler, I don't know. Is this a comeback story of the season right here? What are we looking at with this uh, Rockets team? I mean, first of all, <laughs> RIP Paul Silas. He's the man, three-time champ. People forget he was LeBron's first coach. Uh, rest in peace. And and this is a situation where this this team, listen, the, the NBA is so deep. Even the bad teams have very, very good players. I don't care if it's Boston going to San Antonio. No shade, hey. Michelle. Hey! There's no, there's no easy nights. There's no, there's no gimmies and the Rockets, you know, as much as these teams want that number one pick, that's the front office. That's the owners. That's, that's them kind of speaking that and playing the people they think aren't going to necessarily win a lot of games, but these kids are young. These kids are talented. They have Jalen greens and porters and Jabari Smith. Who's starting to hoop. They have these guys that can go out and they can, they can win games. And also shout out John Lucas as he got his chance to kind of fill in there. He's awesome every nba player loves john lucas um and this was kind of an opportunity where the head coach is out you have the substitute teacher in there and let's go have fun and let's play hard and let's get a win for for silas and they did that and is it smart big picture absolutely not but because they should be losing <laughs> every single game they should but sometimes in those 48 minutes talent's gonna take over and you're not gonna tell Jalen green go miss shots go to like the, the kid's gonna hoop yeah, the Rockets are five and four in their last nine games. Jalen Green has been great this season. He's up to scoring. I'd love to see him shoot better than 41% from the floor, but he's he's continuing to mature into a better player. And Jabari Smith has just been better over the last five, six, seven, eight, nine games. He's finding his stride. This is a, a collection of strong young players who are learning to win in the weirdest, dumbest of ways. But this is how you develop your team. You get together as many young talents as you can. You got a veteran like Eric Gordon kind of steering the ship when need be. Had a great post-game speech yesterday, just celebrating all the guys. And, and, and like Chandler said, they got a good group of strong minds there with, with Silas, with John Lucas, well-respected voices. Even though they had their run-ins with Kevin Porter last year, things have been smoothed over. And it, I like what they're building there, much like we said about Orlando last week. Uh, when you start collecting these young talents, eventually they mature into two better players and they got to just keep going with what they have put together so far. Also, these Suns. are these are big. These are they beat the Suns and Philly, yeah. and, and now the Bucks. Like these aren't these aren't easy wins too. So they're definitely finding something, but not smart. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, the Bucks can find a little solace in the fact that they were beaten by a, a Rockets team that did beat some other big, big, big teams. But Shams, I know that the Bucks are still trying to sort of find their footing. Middleton still getting his his sea legs under him. Where are they on that? Yeah, for them, it, the, the big thing is getting chemistry. And Chris Middleton just got back in the last week or so. And then last night he exited within, I think, six minutes of the game. He had a sprained ankle. We'll see how bad that is. I think he's going to be reevaluated today. But this is, a, this is a Bucks team that does need to find some rhythm. Chris Middleton needs to find some rhythm. I'm not worried about them, but they do need Chris Middleton to, to find his groove because we know that's the guy that they need to be himself if they're going to reach that championship level. Joe Ingles should be back, I think, in the next two to four weeks, and that'll be another good boost on their wing. But uh, this is a team that I think is trying to find their rhythm. They want Chris Milton to stay in the lineup, of course, to find that stride. Right. As they watch Boston sort of keep on cruising, those are the two teams everyone's watching. This is the injury management portion of today's show, and today's focus will be on Eddie's team, the Brooklyn Nets, somehow getting a win against the Pacers with eight players not in this one. Okay, worst look, Eddie, for you. The Nets resting all these dudes or the Pacers losing to that lineup? 
the Pacers losing this game at home is embarrassing. No, no, no offense to oh. uh, my guys on the on the team, the young fellas. Cam had a great game. Uh, Dayron Sharp had a great game. Edmund Sumner had his revenge as well. But you can't lose that game at home if you're a team that's trying to win games. And we've kind of debated a few times whether or not the Pacers are. Um, but you know that that kind of happens. You let your guard down. You hear all these guys are out, and you you feel like you're playing the B team. And, and, and you just rest just a little bit. But it was weird because the Pacers were up late. The the, the Nets had to make a huge run to, to seal that game and, and almost gave it up anyway. But, yeah, I mean, for the Nets, look, they played nine games in 14 days. They they were in the middle of a stretch of, I think, uh, five games in seven days. And, and it, it's just a lot. They got multiple guys coming off surgeries. They got Kevin, who's 34 years old, is leading the league in minutes. Uh, Roy, Royce O'Neal is like third in the league in minutes. It, it happens. It's just the schedule. It is what it is. I, I know fans were complaining at me. Like I make the rotation, but <laughs> look, it's easy to say like, yo, my $400 when it's not your knees and your ankles and your whatever have you that is injured in your nursing Chandler, you've been there. You played four games in five nights. You played back to backs. You understand that, Like, yo, it's easy for me on my couch to go. I went to the gym and I played five games in a row and, and it's way different to play the highest level at absolute maximum effort and to already be ailing it as it is anyway. Oh, it's, it's, it's tough. And this season is so long, man, between all the preseason, the training camp, the shoot arounds, the film sessions, everything kind of goes into a season. So that's, I mean, me as someone who was hurt a lot of my career, I have the utmost respect for these guys that, play and play every single night it's hard to do but this game to me was nuts this is a game that uh you know is tough to swallow if you're the pacers because the nets went into this game thinking they were going to lose and cam thomas he cam thomas is the only one not surprised by the way he played because this is the dude that put free c he put free ct in his instagram bio and he wanted to show them like i should be playing he's cut from the same cloth as jamal crawford as these lou will guys he is an absolute bucket and maybe they should throw him more in the rotation because because kd is not going to be able to do everything but this was a classic case of these guys getting their opportunity and just playing hard and playing free and they know they know they can make mistakes in a game like this because there's no one else to put in, and, and this this was hopefully huge for their bench and those young guys, just confidence that they know they can go in and carry the load and, and win an NBA game. Shams. The league can't be happy about this though, right? Like the fact no. that you have eight players resting, Kevin Durant's not at the arena. Um, but on the other <laughs> hand, you do have an Indiana Pacers team. Like you, you gotta win that game. So I'm definitely more. It's 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 more kind of you know responsibility on their part for losing the game than it is on the Nets. Like you have to shout out the Nets for for how they looked uh, and how Cam Thomas played. These guys played hard. All the all their guys will be ready to go for tonight, except for Royce O'Neal uh, in DC against the Wizards. And uh, on I think Wednesday they play the Raptors. So I, I think you know that'll be a curious game as well, given how the, how the Raptors look. They, they could have done the Scotty Barnes, Kevin Durant situation. So th- I'm curious how much people will still look at that as well. I mean, eight dudes. Can you imagine? Eight guys on a basketball team not playing. You st- it's just fascinating to me. Um, yeah, as a fan, it kind of sucks. But but I sort of, I get it a little bit. Uh, Warriors. Props to Marquise Morris, too. Oh. Great game for the vet. The, 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 the one you. vet that played. Great game the for one, him. I don't the- want to leave him out the one that how dare you uh, by the way the warriors this is the team that has earned enough equity people have not panicked and here is a moment that says this is why the light switch may or may not have been flipped on uh after the blowout win over the celtics 123 107 on saturday i don't even know that it was that close chandler was this a message is it really and is it a message to us or to themselves that hey we still got this uh, I think a little bit of both, but more to themselves. And look, their their issue has been on the road all year long. And the Warriors, this is a team that none of us have worried about all season long. But yeah, this was a very impressive win. Even Draymond before the game is sitting there on, on the court with the guys live saying like all he sees is the Bucks and the Celtics. Like he, he they are confident they're coming out of the West. Um, and they know they're gonna have to go through these guys to get a championship. But this was this was hopefully one of those games that kind of turns things around for them. Clay Thompson seems to be finding his legs. 
uh, Jordan Poole. They, they all had to have a balanced attack. Uh, and this is without Andrew Wiggins, who I firmly believe is their second best player and second most important player all year long. So this is definitely a big win. The Celtics have been the top dog all year long. And this was hopefully a, a turnaround for them and kind of gets them going on the right path. But I, I'd like to see them do it on the road. They're way too good. They're two and 11 on the road, which is, which is pretty brutal. Yeah, look, the, the Warriors are the Warriors. They're the champs. We, we've been saying it all year long, we're not worried. We're not worried. Might have looked a little crazy a couple of times, but they're going to get up for the games they care about. This is a great decision by the league to make this the first primetime game of the year. It, it was premier matchup. It felt important. It felt with that crowd like it, there was a real sense of tension. And then Stephen Clay give you a vintage Stephen Clay performance, vintage last brothers. 10 threes between two of them. They both score over 30 points. You're really just not going to beat that team when they're doing that. There, there's just no way around it. You cannot match that firepower, especially when Jason Tatum plays the way he's played. He's going to have to figure that matchup out because if he wants to win a title, it's probably going to go through San Francisco and these guys. And he didn't even have Andrew Wiggins to deal with that night. So it was a, it was a little worrisome. They, they've had a great trip so far, but you got to be a little troubled by what happened out there if you're the Celtics. Well, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because um, he's got a little bit of time, Tatum does, to think about it, process, marinate. They play again on January 19th. I live for revenge, Chandler. Will this be a revenge game for the Celtics? Yeah, I mean, one would think, obviously, this is this this is prime time, like we just said. This is the whole world just saw them kind of get cooked on national TV. And <laughs> Uh, what a lot of people don't understand is whether you lose by 30, win by 30, if you have 40, if you go 0 for 10, the NBA is such a short term memory, move on, flush it and, and, and on to the next one mentality. And that, that's what the Celtics are going to do here. They, they realized that they had a bad game. Tatum was six of 21. Is the next time they play a little more and is it circled? Yeah, probably. I'm hoping it's, that's also a national TV game. But yeah, if, when I put my parlay winner pick on that day, I'm taking Great. the Celtics and the spread. Oh, well, look out world. <laughs> Maybe Which we'll be good by then. <laughs> means take the Warriors by 20. <laughs> exactly. Dom's up. Save us. Save us. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen the Celtics a couple times in Chicago. They lost both times. Like, I, I don't know. This is just weird. Some, sometimes, I mean, this team is so dominant this year, and Steve Kerr was was raving about them, saying they're literally impossible to beat, and then they beat them. I, but they've had a couple of clunkers this year. I don't know if it's just stuff that's kind of out of the norm for them, given the trajectory they're on this season. But they, they're not uh, immune to having those types of clunkers. They've already had it this year. So I'm curious how many more they have. Yeah, they're, they're on, like, a really weird – two week long road trip as well. I don't want to shoot them bail for losing this game. It's a big game. They have a few days off to prepare and be, be, be prepared for it. But they started out in the East coast in, in Brooklyn, went to Toronto, and then they're doing the whole West coast road trip. They play the Clippers tonight and the Lakers after that. Uh, it, it, it's quite the trip, but this is the team they had to be concerned about. This is the only team they've lost two games in a row to in like years. And yeah, they, they, they didn't exactly show up. Um, I mean, my guy JT to figure that out, man. It, it's it's going to be in the way for him. This is going to be, you, you know, his issue if he wants to win a title. I, I like the vintage psychological warfare um, on Kerr's part about, yeah. Can I can I just pose a hypothetical because producer extraordinaire Danny and I were talking about it. Let's say the Warriors, this is the beginning of their just, they just go on a run, right? Would it be more of a baller move on January 19th if in fact they're in position to sort of call their own shots to sit everyone and kind of mess with the minds of the Celtics, would would that be the thing to do, Chandler? Would that mess with you? No, I don't think. I think they need to rest everyone the night before. They need to go in there and prove that this <laughs> isn't this isn't just a fluke. We can't just beat you at home. We are going to go in there and we're going to dub you guys in your building. That that's what I would do. All right, fair enough, fair enough. I just, I like the mental part of it. We're gonna take a quick break right here. Uh, when we come back, we'll get the latest on DeJounte Murray's injury and all of the magnificent dunks from the weekend when Run It Back returns. Instead, they'll go inside, go up, and he got it! He got it! He got it! I don't believe it! A.J. Griffin at the buzzer! Well, 
shout out my once favorite baseball player, David Justice, in there. Uh, look, that was the culmination of what was the longest one second, I think, in, in the end of a basketball game. It was awesome. Hawks, of course, with the win. But Shams, they, they're also dealing with some other things. DeJounte Murray, what can you tell us about what's going on there? He had an ankle sprain last week, and he's expected to miss, I'm told, two weeks. And so this is just another injury for the Hawks. They're already without John Collins. But I'm told he could be back this week. So you're going to get one guy potentially back. They have their guard and DeJounte Murray out. And I think the larger story here is that the, you know, DeJounte Murray, Trey Young, they have not gotten, I think, the type of reps and the type of, you know, success that Atlanta wanted going into the year. When when the season first started, Trey Young was coming off the ball more than ever in his career. And then he's, in the mm. last, really, month, he's reverted back to how he had played really his entire career. So they need both of those guys to get on the floor and get a rhythm together if this team is going to be successful. Yeah, that, that keeps showing that shot over and over again. It looks a little cringe. Uh, Shams. <laughs> Thank you. We shall speak manana. Uh, as always, appreciate you. And we've got a little This Man Has a Family. Some good dunks over the weekend. Some unexpected, some not so much. But Luca, Luca is our first mm. poster of the day. Not in it. He basically made it. And it's over Drew Holiday. What? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this I'll is impressive Luca. because it's Luca, and this, this really isn't what he usually does. Right. right. But he hit him. He hit him with the full one handy. I like it. I like it. It's not. It's nothing crazy. Yeah, like no. we couldn't get a little bit of extension. Nothing. Just, <laughs> just that over the little guy, over the smaller guy. Look, I mean, I guess he's Luka happy. Doesn't dunk a lot. That's fine. He, he, he enjoyed it. Lost the, the reaction game, nice is dunk. as if he did. It's almost like he did the Zion dunk based on his reaction. Uh, I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> Pretty I will good. say I don't know what Drew I don't know what Drew Holiday was thinking here because anything other than like a finger roll at the front of the rim he's scoring here anyway so he kind of put himself in harm's way here. You yeah, always take weird. the jump backwards shot attempt like that's yeah. cool. How about Caruso? A little fun action was right that there. Oh the, yeah, it yeah, was. All right, that's pretty nice. That's pretty yeah, nice. Not all right. I thought we were that's talking fun. about the dunk here and then I then I see that that's. What's yeah. impressive no, like about that. a pass like that, it's pretty much the only pass at that moment besides over the top that can get to him. And it's risky. <laughs> and it's risky. Yeah, like it was a crazy angle even without the nutmeg. But then to do that, that's like, yeah, that that's that's nice. Good work. Right? Cool like, who thinks I'm going to do this right now? That, that's I, I think that's impressive. I like that one more than I I probably should. How about... Shangoon! This, this is one was not. I didn't approve oh. this, by the way. <laughs> what a Come this on, one, <laughs> By the way, I don't know if they end up reviewing this. I don't think they did, but as a coach, you have to. If a guy does this to somebody and they call it a charge and he's begging like that, <laughs> you need to review that and let this body Oh, count. it was. It was. And uh, it's oh, an it offensive was. charge. Sit down, Shangoon. Rude. Mm. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't even care wow. that it's a charge because this is a straight body. It's, oh, that college is, is always in these moments. Always. What is pop paying these guys? Like, come on. You we, know what, dude? Like... Okay, we're going to do this. I will fly to New York right now. We will do this tomorrow live uh, on the air. <laughs> it's time. It's time. What <laughs> it's a call. Time. Goodness. Uh, okay, first of like, all, why? the Spurs are on a two game winning streak right now. So I don't really hey, know why we're go. doing the slander. Thank you. Playing Cleveland tonight. I'm proud of them. I'm proud of them. Great unis, by that. the way. <laughs> I do love the Fiestas. Uh, John Morant, how about that? Got oh. alternative. He's got options in the air, which is a nice thing to have. It's Chandler, crazy. could you could you hit the fillet like that in the, in the game? No. Is that, was that in no, your bag? No, no the, the the little fillet. I I got I mean, the gritty in my bag. I just do not have that type of fillet. <laughs> Hold on, I don't believe gritty. that part either. We got to see that. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of things being said right now. I don't know about that one. This is, <laughs> That's this is crazy. silly, though. Right? Yeah, like, I like this layup more than the Luka dunk, to be honest. Oh, with I you. do, That's too. A, that's a crazy finish. I'd give to anything to, just... to be able to jump up there and just gently put the ball in the rim. Like, that. that's amazing. That's mm. it's not fair. I would do anything to just be in the air for that long, period. <laughs> or to jump more than two inches off the ground. Like, that. all of these things would be fantastic. Uh, John Wall! Yay! We got John Wall spot. I love this. I love not this. It's not not the greatest move of all time, but but this right here, this is the John yeah. Wall I remember. Right, this and for gangsta. where he is, he's back in DC. Like that's awesome. 
I also love that the fans, the fans, the <laughs> fans didn't boo the fan. The fans like actually cheered him on as an opposing player after a bucket <laughs> on the home team, which was awesome to see. I well, mean, that's his city, like you said. So right. <laughs> well, I almost I look the reaction by him is it's a, it's a lot, but it's fine. It, it's fine. <laughs> it is what it they're is. also the at this is, point of the game. They're also the losing. Right. Here you go, Eddie. All right. Mm. Big fella. Take- <laughs> big fella. You, you you love to see a big guy dunking on a big guy. Like that's like a real, you know, fair. we really had to really had to work for this right here. Dayron's yeah. had a rough season, so I love to see him having some success Ooh. getting out there. He started the season in rotation, eventually came out of it, but yeah, that's that's nasty. They, they you celebrate that one. And it's in the fourth quarter, it matters. That's cool. Right. It's a close game at that time. Like things are happening. Yeah. It's right. better than that Luca dunk. Like, ooh, is it that? is yeah. right. We got to start rating these, like in order of what's great and what's not so great. We will get on that uh, when we get back. Chandler's going to share the gritty with us. Can't wait for that. Don't know how we're going to show it. Uh, Damon Giannis, should they pair up? Probably. And should players call their own fouls? That's next. So hypothetical team picking is sort of fun to do. And Dame Lillard was basically given that option. He said he would pick Giannis to win a championship. Love this idea, Chandler. Would this be the greatest duo in the league? Uh, yeah, that, that's who I would pick as well. He's he's the <laughs> best, he's the best player in the NBA and he would go fantastic with Dame. Who's an undersized guard who can shoot the ball, stretch the floor, not really great defensively. Giannis can kind of make up for everything great that Dame doesn't do to me. <clears throat> yeah, this would, this would top the, the Brown and Tatum, the, you know, this would be the best duo in the NBA because Giannis can pretty much do everything. Dame can't. Dame can do everything. Giannis can't, and it would be Oof. one of the best duos of all time. Yeah, Giannis is a lot of guys' best teammate available, if, if possible. I, I, you know, the things he does, they're so complimentary to a lot of the superstars we have in the league now. It, imagine Giannis with Steph, right? Like you know, covering up a lot of defensive holes and and being able to just pound the paint whenever he wants while well, Steph is shooting from 35 feet. Uh, he would fit with a lot of guys perfectly. I get you, I hear you 100%, Dame. I don't know if that's like a signal. Like, I don't know if you're trying to right? let them know out there in Portland or what, but uh, you're, you're absolutely right. Get that guy you know, out there in Portland and out of the Eastern Conference, away from from, from my guys over here. I would hey. love that. But they would be monsters together. I'm with Dame. I'm with Chandler. That would be I just love it. Watch, Dame, watch, watch Dame get fined for uh, illegally yeah. recruiting Giannis. So it's somehow tampering. <laughs> You're totally yeah. tampering right now. I would love, well, if you cut the league in half, like I've suggested, these are the teams that we could probably put together. I'm just saying 15 teams, 20 teams. Boom, done. Um, Kyrie in the news, but you know, kind of, sort of. He covered his shoe logo with I am free. Pretty poor taste, um, considering that it was the weekend where Brittany Griner was actually freed from a Russian penal colony, but that's Kyrie for you. Getting interest from New Balance, allegedly. You know what, Eddie? How desirable of a shoe-free agent is he still? I wonder, because I know people keep saying he he was the best-selling Nike signature shoe. Those are articles from a few years back. I don't know that that remains true now. He is a very Hmm. popular sneaker, but it's been a tumultuous year for Kyrie, and you're in some change. I don't know how what his Q rating is at this point. And I don't know that he's the most profitable player out there, but he is a name that matters. He is absolutely adored by the kids and the the pure hoopers and of the world and all of that. It's worth a try. I don't know that it's a, the, the shoe in no pun that it, it was thought to be last year when it seemed like Nike was just going to extend him, but it's, it's, it's worth a shot. New balance is, is is trying to ride Kawhi to the promise line. I think Puma would be interesting for him as well. Uh, I, I don't think Adidas takes a shot there. I, I wonder if he'll go overseas to one of the Chinese sneaker brands and, and kind of just make his own signature line or whatever, uh, or even just independently make his own sneaker. But I mean, I think it's worth a shot. I don't think he's the absolute peak sneaker seller that he once was, but y- you know, everybody loves a comeback story. That yeah. Is true. Yeah. I do. I, I listen, he's still Kyrie and kids buy shoes and I don't know how much kids are affected by all the drama <laughs> around Kyrie. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, I don't think he was what he used to be, but like I said, kids still love him. Kids still going to buy his shoes. His shoes are very comfortable. I love Kyrie's shoes when I played. Um, was it a little dramatic to cover it up and do that? Yes. Uh, you're also now a free, uh, a shoe free agent. So this is the time where you can start wearing whatever you want and trying other shoes. You don't have to wear Nikes anymore and cover up the, the logo. So, uh, sure. I'm not really surprised That's by anything. Point. I'm not surprised by anything he does at this point, but I do still think, you know, there's a market there for him to, to get a new shoe and to still have kids all over the world wearing them. Heard a little from a little birdie, a little source with the team. Kyrie was going to rock the Iverson questions. Didn't like the feel, didn't rock oh. with him. Uh, so, yeah, we might see some 06 Kobe from Kyrie soon as a sneaker free agent. I, I, I love that. Like, I love the versatility of just, yo, I'll, walk, I'll rock Jordan threes today. Oh, I'll yeah. rock the, the, claw, the claw threes tomorrow or whatever the Kawhi shoes are called. <laughs> I'd love to see it. Um, but Kyrie and Iverson just tickles my nostalgia bone. Uh, in it like nothing else. So I hope he does find a pair he likes and wears those soon. Yeah, this is the window and wear whatever you want. Uh, we're doing a little you buy in that. We're starting things off with LeBron James. So here's the deal. The numbers, they ain't bad. 27, 8, 6. Uh, are you buying that he's still a top five player in the league, Ooh. Chandler? I know. I mean, here's the thing. There's there's like 10 to 12 guys that are capable of playing like a top five guy on any given night. So it's tough to put him in a top five with his age. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is one of the best two players of all time. And there's going to be some nights that, that, like I said, at his age where he's not going to be able to carry the load. But what he's doing and what he's done is astonishing that the guy's still playing at this clip in year 20 with these numbers um still you know still got it and and it's so impressive what he what he's doing but top five if i was ranking a top five player in the nba right now i would not put him in the top five but like i said there's there's 10 to 15 guys that any given night can look like a top five player because the league is so talented but as long as lebron's still playing he's still somewhere in that range on any given night yeah, I love LeBron. He's my GOAT. I think he's he's the greatest. I think he's still an elite player. Top five is a lot. There's a, <laughs> the league has some great players atop that group. Maybe if we do like a tier system that is satisfy people more, and, you know, I say he's tier two, he's high tier two or something. But top five is just a lot. Uh, but, yeah, I, I love that he's came back from injury, hit the ground running, looks amazing, and he's, he's, he's great theater again. And I was worried about that early in the season. I was a little worried that we were finally getting the actual Wash King and not the hashtag Wash King with the King <laughs> emoji that LeBron likes to use. So uh, I'm happy he's back and doing LeBron stuff. It's just crazy at year 20, 27, 8, and 6 is like him washed. Like, get out of here. Like, guys, <laughs> guys, still unbelievable. I would just like to do a crossover sports reference for perspective because we just saw that. Yaramir Yager at 50 years old played a hockey game yesterday somewhere in the Czech Republic and had two assists. <laughs> he had to do it because he owns the team and his lineup was decimated by illness. I'm just saying, LeBron's not the only great that can play in old age. <laughs> it's happening all over the world. Uh, how about Keldon Johnson? Oh, now here we go. This is a topic I can get behind. Keldon Johnson wore 30-point games before turning 24 than anyone in Spurs franchise history except the greats, Tony Parker and Tim Duncan. Eddie, are you buying that Keldon Johnson can be part of a Spurs big three. Yo, I like Keldon a lot. I think, you know, a little bit of collusion by Pop to put him on that uh, national team, but I like him a lot. <laughs> but, yo, when a stat is this specific, I just I just stop caring before the, the <laughs> description is over. So, like, yo, it, it's one of those major league stats from, you know, from that old movie. Shout out to Keldon, <laughs> but I don't even know what this stat means. That's great. You know, yeah, you, Timmy, Tony, congrats, bro. Well, Victor, if you get Victor women, and then we start the big three. I don't know who the third is, Chandler, but uh, let's hypothetically say the other's Victor. Uh, who's the third? We I don't, don't know. know. We we could just pick. I mean, yeah, it's, it's going to be him. We, he could be a big three. I just don't know how good the big three would be, but he could, definitely, <laughs> he could definitely be a part of the big three. And, like, yeah, you throw him on, on Boston right now with those other two you know, do a duo. Yeah. He can be a big three, but I think he still has, you know, ways to go. I love him. I love his game. I love him at Kentucky. I loved him on team USA. I love that. I love everything about it, but he's also putting up numbers on a, on a bad team trying to lose. So you got to kind of take it with a grain of salt. 
It's great energy. He he's, he is fun to watch in, in all those the regards. Ghost Trey Young. Uh, Ghost first go. Yay, poor Vida. Uh, <laughs> Trey Young shooting a career low 28% from three. The only player that's below 30% with over 150 attempts, Chandler. <laughs> Are you buying that he is no longer an elite shooter? I mean, here, here's the thing. It's it's a it's a weird argument because, no, he is an elite shooter. He just doesn't take elite shots, and his ah. shot selection is pretty poor. Like, you put him on the nets in Joe Harris's role, this guy is a knockdown elite shooter just taking wide-ass open shots. But the problem with Trey is he's the opposite of Zion. He's, he's hoisting up 35-footers. He has the ball in his hands at the end of the shot clocks. He's taking step backs off the dribble crossovers. Like, Dude's literally throwing the ball between guys' legs, taking jumpers. Like, how are you supposed to shoot a high percentage when you, when you're when you're taking pretty bad shots a lot of the time? So, I do think Trey is an elite shooter, but his numbers are going to take a hit just at simply his shot selection and where he's taking them on the floor. It's physically impossible for a guy to have good percentage with the way he's shooting the ball. But is he an elite shooter? Yes, but he's just a bad shot taker. That's weird. Are, are those things, can they be mutually yeah. exclusive? Can, if you're just consistently be? taking awful shots, maybe you're just an awful shooter. Like, I, I don't but like you. I, 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 maybe I took the, you put him in, you put him in Joe Harris's role. You don't think this guy's shooting 45, 50% just but on knockdown and catch and shoot? Can he stop himself from taking the bad shots? I think he'll back up and shoot from half court if you put him in Joe Harris's role. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, he's a fascinating player. I think his, I think his reputation as a shooter has never quite been matched by the actual results. He has range and he is willing to shoot from just about anywhere. But yeah, I, I'm not surprised that he's not shooting so great. He's going to get his points. He's going to get to the line. I, I seen him in Brooklyn a few nights ago. He, lo he looked fine. Like he, he, he shot two or seven from three. It wasn't like he was knocking him down, but he looked fine. And you, you and I talked about this before. I think his best trade is as a passer and a playmaker, but he's just thrust into this role and he likes to play this style where he's just going to shoot 20 times a night. It just is what it is. <laughs> I, I would love for him to take better shots. I, I would I yeah, think absolutely benefit from that. So I hear what you're saying, but like, is, isn't that a little self-inflicted? <laughs> it is. And it's interesting is because you would think he'd adapt with the new additions with Bogdanovich, with Murray. Like these guys can hoop. Like I think do less and you'll get more if I were him. Chandler, if we're playing one-on-one, -on -one, if we're playing one-on-one, -on -one, I'm shooting everything from 40. You're going to just <laughs> laugh and get the rebounds. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're right. It's, You're right. It's, 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 I, I think it's frustrating sometimes to watch him play. I think his teammates must get frustrated. Um, Julius Randle. It's that time of year where we got to ask about Julius Randle and the Knicks. It seems to happen all the time, averaging 27 and 9 over his last five. Eddie, let's do it again. Are you buying that the Knicks can build around Julius Randle? Yeah, if they're going to bring in other stars, for sure. I, I think Ju Julius is a great young player. I don't know how young he still is at this point, but. He's a great modern big player. He, he, he can handle the rock. He can shoot a little bit from time to time. And he's just a handful to deal with. The, the, the earliest Zion comparisons were Julius Randle, and we just gushed over Zion for 20 minutes already. So th there is a lot to like there. Now, is he going to be your best player on a contender? No, probably not. Is he going to be your third best on a really good team? That's absolutely possible. The problem for the Knicks is they haven't found a player better than him since they've had him. Yeah, they they can build around them because because they are. They're just they're just not finding other good players. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he remind he's Jeremy Grant to me. He's not a one option, but he's not a four or five option. He's somewhere in that you know two to three. It just depends on who else you put around him. But yeah, you put R.J. Barrett, Jalen Brunson. Yeah, he's the number one option. I don't think they'll be a very good team, but. He's a great player. Just the Knicks have got to give him a better supporting cast. They got to give him a, a true one option for I think him to kind of reach his potential. But they're building around him, so I guess it's possible. How has that not <laughs> happened yet? I don't sure. understand. Uh, Jabari Smith. Now these numbers are up. Okay, he's shooting just under forty-seven percent from the field, forty-three and a half from three in his last ten. All of those numbers up from his first fifteen games. But Chandler, are you buying that the Rockets would still draft him at three? if they had to do it all over again? Mm. Uh, probably not, but I do think this kid, he's got a lot of Richard Lewis in him where I think he can be a good piece. He's got great touch. He can stretch the floor. He's kind of that, you know, pick and pop four. Um, 
is he a star? No, I don't think he's a star. Maybe he could kind of transform into one, but I do think he could be a good complementary piece to a star because of his shooting ability, because of his size, because of the versatility and everything he can do on the, on the court. Um, but at number three, at the third pick, I want the star. I want the guy to, you know, to find pieces to build around. And I just don't know if he's that, but he, he's showing some promise. He's in a tough situation when you're, when you're a young guy like this and you get drafted to a team with no real leadership, with no vets mm -hmm. besides Eric Gordon, with a losing team, a losing culture, it, it's tough. So this, his, his growth is kind of getting stunted here, um, but just by the, the franchise and the, and the, you know, the timing of what they're doing right now, but he can play and he can hoop and he's got great touch, but I just, I think he's more of a complimentary piece around a star that can have a lot of success. I love the Rashard Lewis comp, by the way. Like, if, if you don't remember Rashard Lewis, he was absolutely born in the wrong era. He plays today. He's, he's, he, I mean, he got a max contract then, so let me not say that, but he plays today. Great point. He's probably making $400 <laughs> million NBA dollars. Uh, great stretch big before we knew what stretch bigs were. Uh, I, I like Jabari. And look, we're talking about 30 games into his career and, and the development he's made so far. He's only 19 years old. Uh, it, 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 at number three, I mean, I guess the option is, do you go with Matherin? Do you go with yeah. Ivy? And and then they've had ups, up and down seasons as well. I think Matherin's been pretty amazing. Uh, so, I mean, yo, you have to see this out. This, you, you're drafting guys for 10 years, not for 10 games. Uh, would they think about it? I mean, I, I bet if you asked them, they would have rather had the two pick and, and, and made it a little easier to make that decision. But uh, I, I still got my Jabari Smith stock. I, I like that he's Got through a rough patch, and he's shooting the three ball well. There's a ton to build on from there. I like that. Giving him giving him some more time. <laughs> I feel like that's only fair. Uh, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, do everything opposite of what these dudes say, <laughs> and you will win money. Parlay time. Next. What a what a memory lane walk this is. So this is all the way back on Wednesday, uh, the four leg parlay. Those big red X's mean exactly what you think they mean. <laughs> ah, nothing. But I will say this, boys. There is value in the talent that you two have exhibited and your consistency to constantly get it wrong. And I applaud both of you. <laughs> there has to be a job for you guys somewhere in this world. How do you feel? Good? Confident. I blame Anthony Davis. <laughs> I, I don't I blame Danny because he, he fumbled Danny. the picks. I don't know. Like I I'm blaming somebody that's not us. No accountability. No, not yeah. zero. That's good. But the, the beauty is you get to do it again and again and again. Today's a new day. Eddie, give us your two. <laughs> All right, I'm going KD over 29 and a half points tonight. Back home in the D.C. area, he's averaged 33 points a game against the Wizards. He dropped a guy last time he was on this court. I'm, I'm going <laughs> with right. the over. A couple days off. Lock. I'm all for it. It's a lock. I'm calling it. Oh, I'm boy. 27 now. Uh, I'm, going, <laughs> I'm taking the points with the Thunder versus the Mavericks. They've already beat them this year. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I like Shea. I like Giddy. He didn't play last time. Uh, I, I like what they their chances here. The Mavericks just have stinkers here and there. They'll, they'll keep it close. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. I like those two. Uh, immediately, I thought it was Celtics minus two and a half when I took them. Now it's three and a half. But we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna still <laughs> we're gonna still roll with that. It's the it's the best team in the NBA. And but on the flip side, Reggie Jackson, he's been great for Clippers all year long. He kind of been steady offensively. <laughs> he should be able to get 13 points for God's sakes. I don't feel Chandler, good about Chandler's like two picks, legs. Man. No, I, I don't. I don't like him. I don't like him. I don't like when awful. we like him. I don't like when we like him. And that's the good, problem. You're, figure, you're figuring out the pattern then. There it is. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if you bet 20, you win 249. For the record, Eddie, I think yours hit, and I think Chandler's both miss. That's my side parlay, ladies and gentlemen, that right. I just made up on the spot. If you want to take that and run with it, go ahead. Um, guys, I wish you luck. One day this is. I all love that we won't know until one p.m. one a.m. Eastern. By the way, that Chandler flubbed this. Thanks. Oh, Just I'll be know you'll be asleep. getting a text. Just know <laughs> you'll be getting a text. <laughs> That's gonna do it for us today. We're on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all the time. See you guys tomorrow. Enjoy the games.